we've really talked about everything uh, in one shape, form, or fashion or another that we need to learn in this lesson. Uh, and we're talking about rate of change. We've already seen change in the previous lesson, talking about the linear functions. And, and, and this is pretty important because one of the things we're going to work on is to be able to calculate an average rate of change given some, some interval, some, some part of x. We want to be able to calculate that rate of change. And, and then if we can represent it symbolically, we can figure it out from something that's been represented symbolically, you know, such as a, an equation. Or we can look at a table and figure out what it is, and, uh, and, and, and even going to a graph, we're going to be able to look at a graph and determine you know, what was that rate of change. Well, let's talk about what that, that, that means. There we go. Oops. All right, so here's what I'd like for you to do. For a function defined in terms of x and y, the rate of change over part of the domain of the function is a ratio that compares the change in y or the change in x. Here's what you need to write down for you. Rate of change is the change in y over the change of x. Yesterday, uh, we talked about another way to write that. Now, why don't you go ahead and write these words down? But I would like for you to also write down delta y over delta x. Yes, ma'am. You're not in my school of writing. That's odd. Well, I'll check it out later, okay? You need to get it so you can see it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to compare what's happened, okay? <laughs> So rate of change is defined by the change in my y or the change in x. That was the way we kind of had in the previous lesson. We just didn't define it so much. Rate of change, you know, we, we've seen that in a lot of things already. Just in a unit rate, we talked about that yesterday. When I, I, I drive to school, I have a constant rate of change if I'm driving at 55 miles an hour and I never vary my speed. For every hour I travel, I will have gone 55 miles further. Now, most everything we do is some form of a rate of change. I also threw in that comparison yesterday about, you know, I could have a rate of change. The more cupcakes I eat, the heavier I get. Right? That's a rate of change. Too many cupcakes means I get too fat. I need to eat less cupcakes. I need to go down. I need to have a negative rate of change now. Uh, that's what I really need. You want to tell. I need to go down. All right, so the rate of change will always be defined as the rate of change in Y over the rate of change in X. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that it's always going to be Y over X. Very much like I mean, when you look at the X, Y axis, we're always going to consider that vertical change. Why? It's almost kind of like you come in first over X. And when we look at our graphs, when we look at any graph, we're going to consider it as we move from left to right as well. We want to notice it going up or down as we move across the graph left to right. Let's look at an example of that. Well, this is a table. You know, we look at, at functions and expressions and tables and, and, and we can look at them in graphs and look at them in equations. And, and this table is simply the years after 2000. So, so three represents the year 2003. This would represent the year 2000. Or that represents the year what? 2006, yeah. This would represent the year 2008. And this would represent the year 2013. It's been a few years. And what we want to do is between the, these intervals, interval just being a piece of time, we want to find out what was the rate of change. <clears throat> For example, from the year 2003 
to the year 2004, what was the rate of change? Well, we know that the rate of change, now if, if I'm going to find the, the, the way something changes, for example, let's say, you know, today I weigh 210 pounds and tomorrow you know, I have a bunch of cupcakes, I weigh 220 pounds. How much have I gained? If I weigh 210 yesterday and tomorrow 220, how much have I gained? Two pounds. Two pounds, that's a lot, isn't it? I must say a lot of cupcakes. If I want to figure out that 10 pounds, here's what Dylan did. He said, oh, 220 minus 210. And he came up with 10. That's how we find the difference. Okay? We take the, the ending one and then turn around and subtract in the beginning. Well, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at 2004, which was 37 cents for a stand. In 2004, I'm going to subtract from it what it cost in 2003, which was also 37 cents. So, so 37 minus 37 is zero, right? And zero divided by one is still zero. So my rate of change in 2003, 2004 was zero cents. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because in 2003, 2004, there was no change. It was 37 cents, period. Well, what about from 2004 to 2006? All right, so in 2006, it was 39 cents, and in 2004, it was 37 cents. So we see the change here, 39 minus 37. I started with the one, I'm working my way backwards to subtract it from the earlier one. So from 2006, 39, 2004, 37. So in the denominator, Six minus four is two. In the numerator, that is 39 minus 37, which also is two. Two divided by two, one cent per year. That's what the, the average rate of change is. is it, it's in those three or two years from 2004, 2005 to 2006, it changed the penny. Got a penny higher. Does it ever go down? No, nothing goes down. Not when you're talking about money. Let's look at 2006 to 2008. So in, in 2008, it was 42 cents. From that, I'm going to figure out the difference by subtracting 39 cents. Now, 8 minus 6, once again, is 2. 42 minus 39 is 3. 3 divided by 2. Well, it was 1.5 cents per year. That's what my average rate of change. It, it gained by a penny and a half, or 1.5. And then from 2013 to 2008, 46 cents in 2013. That's a little longer period of time. Would you expect it to be a little bigger? Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. 46 minus 42, that's 4 cents. And then 13 minus 8. Well, I believe that is five. Yeah. So, point four or not point four, but four fifths or point eight cents per year. So, what was our greatest uh, greatest increase or greatest rate of change? Our highest rate of change was what years? Yeah, 2006, 2008. So the cost of the stamp went up most then, didn't it? What year, did it not, what year was our cheapest or our, our least amount of change? Yeah, 2003, 2004. So, so that gives us a way to understand how did the cost change in relationship to time of stamps? Okay, you know, like I said, we can find a rate of change of most anything. Because really, if there's one thing in life you can count on, things will change. That's just the way it is. Well, let's look at it uh, a little another way here. Let's talk about if we went to graph those points that we just talked about. 
Now, I'm, I'm not going to actually graph it. I'm just going to go ahead and go right to the graph so you can see what it is. See, all I have to do is take those individual points as ordered pairs and graph them. So the graph's going to look something like this. And, and, and just like before, we could find the average rate of change the same way, just using those points. Well, that's not too hard. You know, if we were going from 2006 to 2008, then all I have to do is look, okay, here's this point, 2006, and that point, 2006, was 6 and 39, and this point here was 8 and 42. So what do we do? Well, we take 42 minus 39, we subtract it. Didn't we just do that a minute ago? Yeah, so it's the same thing whether it's a graph or a table. But always when we write our rate of change, we're always going to put our change in y, delta y, over delta x. Now, you probably have been told and have heard that um, that is been described to you as rise over what? Run. run. Yeah, you've you heard that a lot. You, you've been exposed to rise over run. When I say rise over run, I'm just saying y over x. See, I think, I think it's beautiful about math. Really, there's a lot of things that are the same. We just describe them in different ways. So we know that rise is my change in my, my y value. And run is my change, my x value. And so what I'm figuring out here is this is my first point here. This is my second point. What is my average rate of change between those two points? If I look at those two points and their average rate of change, you know, a minute ago, you guys told me, you said that the greatest amount of change occurred from 2006. 2008. Do you see that graphically right there? What is it about that little segment of line that's different from the other segments? It's what? What I heard. Yeah, it's steeper. So my rate of change as it increases that line, it gets steeper, right? But the line goes downhill. It means the cost went what? Yeah. Of course, that didn't happen, right? All right, so that's what we're talking about. And, and, and our goal is to understand what rate of change is, and, and we can see that not only as an equation, we also see it in the graph, we see it in the table. There's multiple ways to see the rate of change. On Monday, we'll continue with these notes. We'll pick up there. All right, for now, here's what I'd like for you to do. Go ahead and, and log on to the quiz. Now, it's not partly there, but just a moment. In Google Classwork, you'll see your quiz. And then we'll finish our notes on rate of change on Monday.